In 1929, a former school teacher from Mississippi arrived in Britain to collect folk songs. James Madison Carpenter had recently gained his PhD from Harvard for his thesis on folksal songs and shanties. On arrival, Carpenter bought a car and struck off northwards up the east coast. I just set out on my own. I'd already had the summer before collecting the shanties. I went up that east coast there and worked every town. I was foolish enough to get a little open Austin car. And as I went north, farther north, I got, got the heavier and heavier suits. And finally, when I got to Aberdeen, I said, give me the thickest, warmest woolen suit of underwear you have. And it was like a coat, but I, I wore it. He not only found sea shanties, but folk songs of many kinds. They included traditional ballads, which some scholars and collectors consider to be of particular literary value. As well as songs, Carpenter gathered many mummers' plays, and a selection of fiddle tunes, customs, children's games and folk tales. Such was his success that his one-year trip turned into a six-year one and involved 40,000 miles of travelling. Carpenter's method of collecting usually involved the use of both a portable typewriter and a dictaphone cylinder machine. Back in, 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 in 29, the dictaphone was brand new. Nobody had ever heard of it. And the idea of having anything that would record a voice was a wonderful thing to them. So they were excited about the, the dictaphone, a machine that could record their own voice. He later copied the cylinder recordings onto discs and transcribed the music of many of the songs. He also retyped the words that he'd taken down from the singer's dictation. Despite all this work on his collection, Carpenter never managed to get it published. Towards the end of his life in 1972, he sold it to the Library of Congress, where it was preserved and digitised. Carpenter's collection is not only large and diverse, it is also significant for a number of reasons. It provides some of the only evidence we have of folk song from the period between the First and Second World Wars, and bridges the gap between the two main periods of English and Scottish folk song collecting. Despite the limitations of his recordings, it's possible for us today to pick out the distant sounding voices of his contributors and to appreciate their artistry. In total, some 800 people are represented in the collection. Their contributions testify to the richness of the traditional performing arts in families and communities and within certain occupations. Their details are also of interest to family and local historians. Thanks to James Madison Carpenter, they've been preserved for posterity.